Hi, my name is Sarah Flynn, and welcome to Book Drops. Um, I'm very excited to have a guest with me today. Um, and um, I didn't introduce myself. I'm um, Sarah. I work in the Popular Library as the manager. And uh, with me today, I have my name is Lisa Sanchez. I'm the Map Collection Librarian here at the Cleveland Public Library, and my pronouns are they, them, theirs. Thanks so much for being here. We've been planning this for a little while, so it's given me time to catch up on a lot of things I haven't read before. So A lot of really exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a wide range, and then we were even talking. Um, I went up and helped in the um, children's department and grabbed some of those books, too, so it spans um, all types of topics and all ages, and so I think we'll have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Great, so um, I think um, we should start with one that we both read, um, which is Gender Queer, yes. which has been getting a lot of attention. Um, it's a graphic novel, and I don't have a copy here with me. I read it on my iPad, but, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of challenges to it and all over the country. And if you're not aware, if you um, look through the news, you'll see that there are definitely more recently, um, and I, it may be shocking to more people that aren't in the library world, that there have been a lot of challenges for books on a variety of topics um, more recently. And this is one of the biggest ones. Um, it's a graphic novel and, you know, um, people object because there are some, you know, some things depicted in it that you know they feel um, are objectionable but I think that there is that I think there's also a prevailing theme of challenging books that have LGBT lived experiences in them and gender queer is especially especially bold in them because we are seeing a gender queer person story which I don't think has been really presented in mainstream literature, in the mainstream media, the way that maybe queer lived experiences are, or gay lived experiences, or even sometimes like binary transgender experiences can be depicted in literature mm -hmm. or popular culture. We're getting this sort of story that is in transition and in opposition to people's misunderstandings about people's gender journeys and transgender experiences. And I think that that has, that has the capability of making people very uncomfortable without further examination of the text or the context in which Maya has lived their lives. Mm -hmm. And because it does span a lot of years, um, and yeah, I, I think it's just, I think there are just lists floating around of here's books that have this content in them, and then people are just going to school boards and saying these all need to be banned without ever reading it as well. And I think it it definitely bears repeating or um, making sure that it is clear that these books are not for young children, they're for older teenagers or adults. Mm -hmm. um, so at minimum, the reading level and the content level is not acceptable for little ones, and I think that those points are very often conflated in these discussions as like this is for this is being promoted to children well it's not it's being promoted to adolescents who have bodies and learn their bodily autonomy and learn consent and have their own journey with that and they are allowed to intake that information in a safe way and also there's books with similar topics that are targeted toward children that are also being banned so it's not a great argument because even yeah. if it is, um, you know, appropriate for that age, it's still being challenged. So, um, so that one really was on the top of a lot of lists. So I think, um, you know, that's a recommendation. I think definitely, um, I don't read as, you know, tons of graphic novels. So I think, um, you know, it's a good thing for everyone to read, and um, I. I did enjoy it and learned a lot. Yeah, it's a fairly easy read um, as a graphic novel. It's it's written and illustrated by Maya. And I will say that I borrowed a copy and it was you know from people who have lived a gender diverse experience and they found this book very impactful. And I think that is extremely important to hold in mind because the idea that a book can infuse people with new ideas that they would have never had and that these ideas are undesirable in some way is um, unrealistic mm -hmm. when 
people live in their own bodies and experience their own bodies in ways that makes them feel like they are the most in tune with themselves. And I think that gender queer captures that in a way that graphic novels haven't before. Mm -hmm. And in a, a wide reaching way, which is really important. Right, and it's important for these books to be available um, to young adults everywhere to know that they're not alone and you know maybe they haven't seen anything on TV or don't have anyone in their you know group of um, friends or family that have had this experience in this way then know they're not alone and that someone else has gone through this too. So. Yeah. Um, so that was the first one. Um, I was gonna grab um, the one I just finished. Um, so this one is a few years old and I'm, I am very late in reading this. Um, the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, um, which has gotten so much press, it's a great book. Um, I did the audio book on my phone and really enjoyed it. The um, narrator was excellent, did just voices and um, there's so much, so many emotional things in this book that um, they really brought to life. Um, and really, it's another question of, you know, why is this a book that's banned? Um, and I don't want to give away too much of the plot besides, um, you know, the, um, she's an African American teenager, um, and there's um, an instance with the police, and there's police brutality, and it's very difficult for her to navigate. Um, she has an uncle who is a cop, and um, she also goes, um, she goes to a private school, so she's juggling all of these things in her life, where she lives, where she goes to school, um, her horrible experience um, with the police, and then her experience being very close to her uncle who helped to raise her. Um, and I can't, you know, see that there's anything objectionable and um, it's, you know, um, fantastically done. And I, you know, so I, um, it must be, you know, the police aspect of it and that uh, people don't like. So um, this has been on a lot of lists as well. Yes, I, I know that the increase in book bans and book challenges over incrementally increasing over the last several years, mostly deal with LGBT experiences, but they also deal with uh, racial injustice incidences. And I think that you have to wonder, like you said, why are these being challenged? Who is challenging them? And what are the narratives that they feel confronted with? And so strongly that they think that they need to take a book out of circulation or take it away from a child, a, a book that is meant for young adults. Yes. I think that that requires a level of introspection that most people may not have access Just to at this moment. Don't have, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, why libraries and school libraries are important to, you know, make sure they have all different points of view mm -hmm. um, represented. So, um, so I'm really glad I had a chance to read this. Yeah, I've added it to my it list okay. on your recommendation. Yeah, do, do the audio too, because it was, it was really, really good. Um, share with me one of yours. So I, it's not in front of me, but I did really want to talk about um, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie because it is consistently one of the most challenged books since 2007, which might be impressive, if not a little bit infamous. Um, it's about a uh, indigenous boy living on a reservation and facing all of the trials and tribulations that go into living in a situation that is the result of systemic disinvestment and historical genocide of indigenous people. So it's, you're coming at it and you think that's a really heavy story, but it's told with so much whimsy and from a child perspective. And I, it is also, again, consistently challenged. And I think it is because it very clearly, but with no real fanfare depicts this person, this child's lived experience, including instances of domestic violence, extreme poverty, adult alcoholism, um, childhood inability to have co healthy coping mechanisms because the adults in their lives don't have healthy coping mechanisms, and the series of things that go into this kid's life but don't really 
I don't know. They don't really seem to take away from him having silly drawings or having dreams or while also acknowledging the reality of despair that can exist in a situation like that. And I, admittedly, I read this um, last year, so it's less clear to me than some of these other guys in front of me. But I think about it a lot just because, as we were talking about off camera, waiting for the shoe to drop of like, why is this challenge? It has to be something very dramatic and very uh, extreme. And it's just a child's life. <laughs> and, and things that happen to people all the time, unfortunately. Um, and people's lived experiences and bringing light to that or bringing awareness to that, but also acknowledging that they exist and that people survive and people continue to live their lives in mm -hmm. that. And I think that's a really strong story, especially because Sherman Alexi writes predominantly uh, about indigenous lived experiences as an indigenous author. And to have his, I want to say it's his first YA novel, his maybe first or only YA novel, um, to just be about this in a way that is just very on its face, very un unabashed, mm -hmm. unfacing, that I found it really endearing in a way because you root for the protagonist, you root for Arnold, and you want to see where he goes. And I think that that is a real sign of a successful story. Mm -hmm. So I do recommend that. Okay. You have to read I, it. And of course, I checked a few off and have to add a few more back on. Um, the next one um, I want to talk about is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which I read at least 15 years ago. Um, but I think it's come back into popularity because of the TV show. Um, and people make a lot of parallels um, with um, things going on in our society right now. And um, you know, these are things we've been grappling with for a long time. So um, especially in the show, I was just speaking to someone about the show has flashbacks to before Gilead. And um, Elizabeth Moss is the main actress, so that's kind of what's fresher in my head than the book. But um, she comes home from work and she couldn't pick up her birth control from the pharmacy. And um, I think she said, to, she said to her husband, oh, I'm not able to pick it up, but you can pick it up. And then there's these little glimpses as you go back to when everything started, um, you know, um, not being able to have bank accounts. Um, the women were fired and walked out of their jobs. They couldn't work outside the home. And that these things um, were gradual, but um, then very quickly turned into, you know, um, a nightmare fascist government. Um, so there's just so much in this to talk about. And I, I think that's why it's banned is because it deals with lots of difficult topics. Um, definitely sexual violence. Um, there's just, you know, um, list upon list of really difficult topics that are handled in this book. But I think reading it, you know, makes you really think about society and um, laws that are made and um, women's autonomy. And uh, I think everyone should read it. <laughs> um, but really, it, it just, um, and I also say to people, um, I don't recommend the TV show because it is definitely difficult to watch. Yes. So, you know, you don't want to go home after a, a day at work and like, let me turn on this where there's violence against women. And yeah. it's a it's a difficult sell. And I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I'll try and sell people on, oh, this show, you should watch it. And the, not this one. Um, <laughs> if you feel like it's something you can handle, then I think um, it really makes you think. But um, it's, it's a very difficult watch. Yes. I remember watching season one. And I, I read the book in, like, in parallel to watching the show. And I finished the book, and the show kept going. And I was like, the show doesn't have to keep going. If this, is, this, is, this is good. Hulu, if you're listening, you can <laughs> Season <stop>. five. <laughs> It's fine. Elizabeth Moss has other acting opportunities. But yeah, because I think that there is um, there is a little bit of like a, a running around in the uh, in the misery and yeah. in like the violence of it. And I think that Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale, the book, does a pers like a totally passably fine job of preventing the sci-fi story that's rooted in 
real like real human fears mm -hmm. as a lot of sci-fi is and does a good job of sort of like wrapping that up and i haven't read any other atwood um so i can't speak to her other work but um there's a sequel that came out a few years ago to, to him yeah i don't know if it's like technically a sequel but um it is it's um years later in gilead and it's um aunt lydia there's three female viewpoints a teenager from canada a teenager that grew up in gilead and Aunt Lydia is the third viewpoint. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. So something like some another. Okay. Read, but yeah, that's besides that. I haven't read any other Atwood either. Well, tough to follow for sure. Sorry, yeah, that's that's a that's like a big one. So yeah, share with me something else. Well, let's talk about something sli okay. slightly more upbeat then. Yeah, yeah. Which is all boys aren't blue, which I constantly want to call. The uh, boys aren't blue D just like mixing it up all the time but um, another uh, predominantly challenged book I'm gonna refer to my cheat sheet yeah, the, yeah. Um, third most challenged book of 2021 after gender queer and it's again just like a li the lived experience of a queer black person who also has like differing ideas of how he presents his gender or thinks about his gender and what his life was like growing up with that. I, I read it pretty recently and it's one of those books where sometimes you can read a YA novel and you're like, I'm 100% zoned in. This is like really good. This one I felt read very much for like a YA mm -hmm. audience, like a, maybe just a tad too old for it. Um, but I still found it really interesting because the author is so thoughtful about the way in which he writes about his experience, and mm -hmm. he's very conscientious about the people his life touches. And I felt that, like, that was really compelling because there is also, and I, I imagine this is also part of the reason why it is challenged, is that there is an address of, like, some, you know, some sexual occurrences that happen when he that he does not consent to. And his dialogue around that is unlike anything I'd ever read before. And I felt like it was really radical in its presentation. And I would not say, you know, judge the book by that section, but it is, the whole book kind of leads to that point where you understand the author and understand his understanding of these experiences, not just that one instance, but his entire life and where he is in the moment that he's writing it. And I I found that really interesting. Some of the other like self-aware stuff about like, that I think might appeal more to teens mm -hmm. as they are like discovering themselves, great. Maybe just outside of my audience, you know. Right. Nice. Um, and I love this guy cover every time it comes up. I'm like. Yeah, and this, this author was just here for a YA book conference at the library. Nice, nice. Um, I want to grab actually some picture books um, just because these are on the list and I'm, um, I just wanted to share because it hadn't crossed my mind as much as the other ones that have been in the news. Um, but these are both um, for children or young adults um, about puberty, about sex, um, and there were a lot of these on the list. Um, so I pulled to um, What's the Big Secret? Talking About Sex with Girls and Boys by Lori Krasny Brown and Mark Brown, and Sex, Puberty, and All That Stuff, A Guide to Growing Up by Jackie Bailey. Um, so, you know, topics that I think it's important for, you know, children and teens to learn about, um, but as we'd said before, things that um, are disturbing for some reason. Um, and it's difficult, you know, it's difficult to, you know, see why these are banned when it's something that is teaching children about their own bodies and about what's happening to them. So I think it's yeah. difficult. I think it's especially interesting just because this is like, this. this seems like, banned classic you know where it's like we don't talk about puberty we don't talk about the things that happens when your body changes um because i i personally went to a high school and a junior high that was an abstinence only education which you know anecdotally doesn't work like you it, like that does not inform teens in a way and it does not give them the information that they need to succeed to make decisions yeah. yeah and you know whatever those decisions may be they do not have all the information 
available to them. And for books to exist in a neutral space, in a safe space, for them to intake that information, I can't see a lose to that because yeah. arguably it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like these things occur and that is why we have a legacy of reactions to them, including systemic decisions on like school levels or educational levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so those are two that, that didn't surprise me. Um, do you have another one? Yeah, I do. I Old caveat, I have not finished it yet, but I'm actively reading it, which is L'Envoy by Jonathan Evison. I was especially interested in this one because, again, it's... it's no, every list. Yeah, it's number two on the list. Um, and the thing that I find most interesting about challenged books that I read is so often, you know, you have... They have LGBT content, okay? They have Black lived experiences, sure. A lot of them, including um, Lawn Boy and The Absolutely True Diary of Part-Time Indian, are a lot about poverty and living in poverty in a way that is not pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like, you just got to, you know, everything will work out. You're just not trying hard enough. This is very much a story of systemic poverty. Um, this author's character also lives on a reservation, although he is not indigenous. He is a um, multi-ethnic... Mexican American person who has just been scrounging, who has a differently abled brother who has just been scrounging from the beginning and has witnessed a number of ways in which he perceives that he loses. And it's about, it's a coming of age story. And now we're getting out of him kind of like getting down about all of the things that are keeping him down and trying to not just like climb a social ladder or climb a vocational ladder or you know make it to the top of what we think is success he's trying to understand himself in a way that will fulfill his life more and there are some like late um, lgbt instances in this but it is also in the process of him understanding himself so he feels connected to his own life and once again this book is for like the author has said it's for like 16 and older like mm -hmm. it's an older end of the spectrum book it's also specifically um i think it's got a special designation where it's like adult book with like young adult appeal it, yeah it's very much kind of like on the adult audience spectrum and i think it reads a little bit differently than say like an all boys aren't blue i will say i really recommend it for the writing it's um written in a way that i find compelling because it is like sentences make me laugh like the way in which they are composed make me laugh and it has a similar vibe as some of like the more recent like 2020 2021 creative fiction we've seen come out like uh i love you but i've chosen darkness um or wrap or was it wrap my house around your body um they're all they all sound like 2005 screamo band names to me but they're very good but those those sentences or that kind of flowery language can get a little overwrought sometimes so far in this book done a very good job of just been like you got me that is very powerful and also funny it's hard so i will report Our back next. when i finish it okay. we are we're just about halfway done so nice well we might have to do the show again because i can't see this topic <laughs> going away anytime soon um i was gonna grab one of the other children's books um and i grabbed um, so children's books um, with LGBTQ content are not anything that are new to being banned. Um, and I grabbed this just for context. Um, Heather has two mommies, which um, was, I, in my mind, is one of the first and biggest kind of challenges. Um, and then I pulled a more recent one, which I didn't see the date exactly. Doesn't matter. Um, this is Uncle Bobby's Wedding. Um, words by Sarah S. Brannon, pictures by Lucia Soto. And it's an absolutely darling book about this girl who is very close to her uncle. And he announces he's getting married to his boyfriend and she's upset that she's not going to fit in to his new life and there's not gonna be space for her and she's she's upset. Um, so he explains, you know, how much he loves her and, you know, includes 
the boyfriend in like some of the, the activities that they like to do together. So then she understands like that she's, you know, um, not going to be left behind and it goes through to their wedding. And it's a, you know, picture book that is just sweet and about love. And I, yeah, it's difficult to see why this is banned. I love a good because, picture book. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's just, um, it's just so sweet. Thank you for bringing those. Yeah. Um, I think we've got time for one or two. More. Okay, which two? one? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. okay. We got to talk about Toni okay. Morrison. Yeah. Um, a classic, of course. The Bluest Eye also banned ad infinitum for the rest of time um, because it deals with abuse of all kinds. Um, before I read this book, um, I, I was warned that it's like, it is just like, kind of triggering right right off the top. And that is true. It is a tough read. It is an emotional read. It has a lot of trauma in it. It is also arguably one of the best books I think I've ever read. Like, And I, I read it pretty recently in the last few months. And before this, I had never read Morrison, A Sin, honestly. Um, I had read Sula last year, which was also very good and rec to me, recommended to me um, in like, in order to kind of ease my way in instead of starting with Bluest Eye, just because it is sort of like trauma forward. But the way in which it is written is has an element of magical realism in the way in which it's told in the stories and perspectives that it presents. And it's hard to describe it without giving too much of it away. But I will say that Toni Morrison is the greatest for a reason. And this book is I, I would wager to say without reading all of the books that have ever been produced, one of a kind, in a way that it talks about uh, black girls lived experiences and the lives of black folks around her, and also the generational impact of all those experiences culminating in a single moment or a single story. And you just you just can't get any better. I think again, like if you do decide to read this, trauma front, um, you know, please take breaks where you need to. I will say that I think it is not graphic. That's not true. It is graphic, but it is literary in, in its depictions of these events. So if you can separate from that, I highly recommend it. Yeah. And I think for, for any of these books, um, you know, I think it's useful for people to look up trigger warnings ahead of time and there are websites where you can you know see what's included before you um you know get started with the book and that way you know you know what to, to expect um well i think we got through a good amount yeah i think yeah. so um and i want to thank you for joining me today thank you Sarah. and yeah this um i'm really glad this got um a lot of new books on my list and um it was nice that we had a, you know time to um you know plan for it and have a nice mix of things yeah and of course I'm I'm going to continue to read and keep up with the books that have been most challenged yeah um mostly because I find that they are you know really killer like the bluest eye amazing yeah like, yeah I hate you give I yeah. just it's always been on my list and I've always heard about it and I didn't have a reason to read it so yeah so, yeah I I I'm like the only silver lining is it's like, please tell me what books you think are the worst so I can read them. And it really cuts down because otherwise I'm just like unfiltered cloud of to be read lists. I'm just like, I have no idea. This way we're like, oh, here, this sure. is easy. You made the list for me. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thanks a lot.